we're back with the LS Swap New Edge Twin Turbo, making almost, I'm hoping, like a thousand horsepower. But since you guys saw on the last video, we got it running. It's it's not idling, but I think it's in the tune, so don't worry about that part. What I need to do is change the oil. The oil smells so much of gas that I really do not want to ruin the engine before we even get to have any type of fun with it. So let's do an oil change. And then the second thing, it wants to overheat pretty quickly. I do know there's no thermostat in there, so I got a thermostat here, throw that in, hopefully that's the problem, and we can move on with the coolant system. Then the third thing, I need to do the alignment just a little bit, that way you can drive straight, and I kind of want to go outside with it, and try to take it up and down the block here, since it is such a nice day, and I just hope everything kind of goes well. I know one thing I want to try to do is make the tips on the exhaust just a little bit smaller because I do know this side likes to rub. It's either I cut it and angle it out more or just try to make them smaller. They do look pretty cool long, but hey, at the end of the day, function over fashion. So let's get this thing up in the air, get the oil changed, get the thermostat in, and then obviously try to get the alignment done. Honestly, the scariest feeling knowing the drain pan gets full and it's still draining oil. So I had to grab the bigger bucket uh, just to make sure that we weren't going to lose it. And guess what? We still lost them. No, the oil looks good. That's always a good thing. Rakes of fuel. Um, but hopefully now we should be A-OK. -okay. Um, we'll refill it. Another six quarts. New filter. Um, then we can move on to the thermostat. Thermostats in, oil stopped off. Now, all we gotta do is do a quick alignment. So I need to get this wheel back on there, back on there, loosen up the tie rod ends, and all I gotta do is a little twisty twisty, and the alignment should be ready to go. I really wanna figure out why my camber caster is so far off, but that might be another day, because I leave for Jamaica in less than 12 hours. I want this video up before that. So we need to hustle, get everything going, that way, I can get this thing on the road and drive it a little bit before we head out. Alignment's done, oil's done, and obviously the thermostat is installed. We just got to top off the coolant. But let's go ahead and start this bad boy up and let's see how fast it does warm up. Hopefully it's a lot slower now and we don't have any coolant issues. All right. I know. I know we got to get a little bit of throttle, but let's find out. Besides the dying part. Now we're just gonna sit here and watch. This thing did climb up really fast last time. Four five, let's go. Five is the magic number. Five looks like the magic number. Oh, come on, Billy. Come on. You know you want to run for us? Shut it off 
off a 207. So the thermostat did not help it at all. This hose isn't really warm. This one's still just cold as hell. The radiator itself is cold. Something's blocking. Something is not allowing it to flow. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder, I wonder. The only thing I can think of is that is not a good reading anymore. If it's not actually overheating, the coolant, the coolant temp sensor is showing that it's getting hot. I don't know. But I know I have the steam port hooked up there. It goes to the middle. I want to say something. It's got to be making it to where it's not. I want to, let's just go ahead. I'm going to order a new hose, the upper hose for it, and see if that actually helps with the overheating issue. But right now, I'm going to go ahead, get it on the ground. At, hey, at least it's starting and idling. You know, um, I did have to open up the throttle blade to about a 6, so I might turn it down just a little bit, say to a, like a 5 TPS, because I want to say it's supposed to be 5 when you're supposed to start it. If anybody knows, leave it down below. You know, I gave away a free hoodie because I didn't read someone's comment. I think I did like it, too. That's the funny part. I think I liked it, but I didn't understand it until, obviously, later on. Heater hoses are warm, so I don't know. I don't know what's going on with the coolant system here. Radiator is ice cold, but it's showing on the temperature wise on the cylinder heads that it's getting super hot. Maybe it's actually not. Maybe it's just. Well, it did suck down, but still. I don't know. You guys let me know down below. I do need an overflow. I don't think that's what's causing the extreme temperature rise as fast as it is. But maybe I need to move that coolant temp sensor into the, the radiator itself. I just know the stock Camaro ones, it's blocked off right there and there's no way to actually get something routed with the turbo in the way. Well, I know I need to move this thing over because it's currently just kind of in the middle, but at least it'll move under its own power. I touched the coolant, by the way. Coolant's cold. So I won I'm wondering if it's giving me a false reading. That's why it's going up so fast. So I don't know if I need to figure out a different coolant temp sensor or what. But for now, let's go ahead and get this thing moved over. You guys can see there's a lot of room that it can move. We'll start up the old Slow Dana budget friendly car. Then I am surprised no one has said anything about this guy just chilling right here. It's a little 1996 Mazda Miata. Got this a while ago, and I haven't filmed outside for a couple of reasons because I want to keep it a secret. Um, but there's a couple things I want to do to this thing, but I'm not going to disclose that right now. But it's going to be kind of crazy, okay? I'll, I'll say this. The Miata's going to be carbureted. That's all you get. Let's go ahead and get this thing moved over. Probably over there. Get this thing started. Pulled back right there. I need that thing inside the garage because I will be in Jamaica for a week. And I'd hate to see that thing get towed off. And uh, I want to take you guys out to the land and show you guys the progress that we have going on. Something was scraping on the ground. It was. It just felt weird. Oh yeah, yeah. The exhaust is a little lower than expected. Just like that oil pan. It's just a wee bit too low. But you guys already know. Single turbo, LS1 oil pan. Fix that right up. Am I right? Am I right? All right. Let's get this thing backed up and move under its own power. This one, I'm actually super excited to actually move under its own power properly. I ran over the oh, oh, oh not the cool oh, oh, oh. I swear I can't do anything where it doesn't involve spilling a fluid. Okay, that is just my trait. Okay, it's just spilling fluid. I really hope this is gonna reach. It's a 50 footer, and that tire back here is flat. So I really hope it. It is definitely not. Come on, a little more. Oh no. Okay, that's just, this is all I get. This is all I get. 
Is it gonna work? Hell yes it will. All right, well, the tires are aired up. Let's go ahead and push this thing inside and show you guys a little walk around of uh, the old Miata, the M edition. I need to make sure that I buy a new steering rack because I forgot I kind of broke it right down there because I didn't actually have a key that I actually do have a key made for it now. So I should be able to unlock. Oh yeah, that's not good. That's not holding anything. Now we gotta figure this out. Here's another look at everything. I don't know if somebody was trying to get into it or take stuff, but like the cam angle sensor's unplugged, the mass airflow sensor's unplugged. They said the Tommy belt broke, but none of these bolts look like they have been touched, um, besides just this guy right here. And he said he never took off the valve cover. So how do you know the Tommy belt broke if you never took off the valve cover and actually look at it? But the car's been sitting since 2010. The key he gave me didn't even unlock anything, not even the steering column, nothing. So he's like, yeah, I use this key all the time. I'm like, for one, you're a liar. But it is the M edition, like I said. So it's got the cloth and black with the wood grain. So it looks kind of nice. I guess what I need to do, let it air out just a wee bit. That way you don't stink up the whole, when I'm going to work on it. Ugh. I really am not looking forward to actually putting a top on this thing, but you gotta do what you gotta do sometimes. It really brings back that blue Miata stage that we, uh, that Zach and I used to drive a lot and beat the crap out of. It was fun, I'll say that. So I can't wait to show you guys a two week build on this guy, okay? I'm putting the timeline on it. I'm doing it as cheaply and as quickly as I can. I'm not, I'm not wasting time on this thing at all. Because I think that's what's that's what's killing all my builds is I'm not giving myself a deadline of when I want it done. And then obviously you guys lose that spark. So I, what I might even do, what do you guys think? One long, one long video uh, building this entire thing uh, from start to finish or multiple segments, part one, two, three, four, obviously, etc. Um, but you guys let me know. Let me know down below. Well, let's go ahead, hop in the truck. We're gonna go out to the land, show you guys some progress out there. It feels like I haven't done anything and pretty much tell you the whole, you know, what we're doing with the land, what we're doing with the buildings, the garage, you know, etc. the cars. So we'll see you out there. The one thing I hate about this place is it goes from asphalt straight up to dirt, but we're just right down there and that's all we gotta drive. But man, it's gonna suck if it rains. It sucks when it snows. We've already seen that firsthand, and this road is not smooth at all. We're gonna go through the the third entrance here. It's basically to the field. See the fence line, all of this stuff right here. The biggest thing is, man, the, the dust that's gonna accumulate. But we have so much stuff to clear out. It is honestly ridiculous. But it's so peaceful out here, honestly. Can't wait to just be out here doing our own stuff, making our own videos. But we got so much brush. We got this actually, this whole thing, if you guys can see the asphalt or the concrete there, actually keeps going all the way into the building. So this whole slab, this is about 30, I think it's 30 feet long. The concrete's a little messed up, so I don't think I'm gonna use it for the new, you know, building for the garage, but Zach and I have been putting in some work trying to get it all cleaned up to see how well it looks. We got a couple things going on for this guy. But this whole area is concrete, which is kind of nice. You know, I just need to figure out if I'm building just a barnuminium. Am I just going to put a garage right here and then just kind of live out of a like, a, like another trailer? Uh, a camper of the sort? Just something. But we got so much firewood that we've actually cut up. Um, this is just from a couple trees, like those trees over there and four or five trees over here that we've actually only cut down. We have so much more. Like this has to go, I wanna say this building's gotta go. It's pretty cool of what it is. And yes, we, we put the Miata that we bought for her in this place that's been sitting here for a good couple months now. And it's not bad. It's like a little, nice little lean-to. 
keeps it out of the elements at least. There's like so much potential out here. This is four and a half acres. The only bad part is the there's a train tracks right here that goes through the whole thing on the other side. And how many trains did we count the other day? Five, six, seven? Nine. Nine. So that might be getting annoying over time, but sometimes I can't even hear it, okay? We'll get used to it. But this all needs leveled back out. What we're trying to think is do we just build this up or do we put another footer around it to make it longer and then, you know, obviously build up from that. You keep saying it's small, but this thing is huge. Well, it's... It's, it looks... It looks freaking huge, okay? I don't want to hear it. Yeah, because I was thinking, start from there, just keep going here, here, here. Make it 16 foot tall. That way, there's a third story. So up, down, and then obviously the basement side. Obviously, we have all of this woods here to cut down. This is, there's so much to do. We already got a couple trees cut down here that are big. Um, we got so much walnut. We got mulberry, hackberry. Well, there's ash, cottonwood. There's just so much. I mean, these things are, these things are not small. These things are freaking gigantic yeah this is what zach and i have been doing on the weekends sometimes when i don't post on the weekend it's because i'm out here you know cutting trees down like this this walnut's been on the ground for a while now and uh, we just have this whole area but yeah this is the property so if anybody didn't see the video where we, i showed it last time if you guys want to see the clearing video of getting everything cut down moved around some country living types you know vibes okay let me know down below. But for now, I think that's it. I'll see you guys when I get back from Jamaica. Peace out.